Om Namah Shivaya students. With continuation to our previous videos on the poem A Legend of the Northland, let's now finish the entire poem along with all the poetic devices used by the poet. Now let's start with the 13th stanza. Now you shall build as the birds do and shall get your scanty food by boring and boring and boring all day in the hard dry wood. Saint Peter cursed the woman that hence she would become a bird because she did not deserve the human form. She shall become a bird and just like birds build their houses by boring that is making hole in the wood and collect very little food by working hard the entire day. Similarly, she would also work hard in the dry wood all day and get little food and make a small place for herself to live in. The figures of speech that we find here are alliteration in the words built birds by boring boring. In both the cases, B is repeated. Secondly, we see the use of repetition in the use of the word boring. Let's move on to the next stanza. Then up she went through the chimney, never speaking a word. And out of the top flew a woodpecker, for she was changed to a bird. As, so, as soon as St. Peter cursed the woman, she did not get a chance to speak for herself because that very moment she flew up to the roof through the chimney and flew out in the form of a bird. St. Peter's curse had converted the woman into a bird. In this particular stanza, we do not see any use of figure of speech. Let's move on to the next stanzas. Now we'll see the last two stanzas of this poem. She had a scarlet cap on her head and that was left the same. But all the rest of her clothes were burned, black as coal in the flame. When the woman turned into a bird, she was wearing a red colored cap on her head. This cap was there on the bird's head also. But the woman's remaining clothes had burned and turned black in color just like coal. In this particular stanza, we see just the use of simile where her clothes are being compared with coal. Clothes were burned black as a coal. The comparison is made with the word as. The next stanza. And every country school boy had seen her in the wood where she lives in the trees till this very day, boring and boring for food. People who live in the countryside, even the small children who go to school, has seen this kind of a bird in the woods. They see that she stays there all day and keeps on digging the wood with her beak to collect her food. Whenever any child sees this kind of a bird, then his elders tell him this story. They say that the bird used to be a woman earlier. She was very greedy and so she was cursed by Saint Peter and turned into a bird. They get a teaching that they should never be greedy. The figure of speech used here is reputation in the use of the word boring. Secondly, we see the use of personification that is human qualities being awarded to anything that is not human. Giving, uh, we see this in the use of the line where she lives in the trees. Here she is being referred to the bird. Let's see the various poetic devices used in this poem. Let's start with the title of the poem. The title of the poem clearly states that the poem is about a legend from the cold region of Northland. Like every legend, it is a story passed on from generation to generation and believed to be true even though there is no evidence to establish its truth. The title is appropriate as it introduces the narrative form of the story which is to impart moral values. The place where the action of the story takes place is also clearly mentioned in the title. 
Hence, the title stands apt for launching a mythological tale. A Legend of the Northland is a ballad. A ballad is a poem narrating a story in short stanzas having some educational values for all. Ballads are written in short stanzas and all the stanzas comprise of four lines. There are total 16 stanzas in this poem and these stanzas will tell us a story. Ballads are a part of folk or popular culture and are passed on orally from one generation to the next. The poem is in the form of a ballad as I have already told you with four lines in each stanza. Each stanza follows the pattern of the rhyme scheme A, B, C, B. Second and fourth line rhymes in every stanza but the first and the third line doesn't. So we can see that the poem conveys the message that as human beings we should have positive qualities like affection, love, fellow feeling, sympathy, generosity and a sense of sharing. The poet also brings forth the idea that people with negative inhuman values like selfishness, greed and cruelty are ultimately punished. The blessings of human life with food, shelter and warmth have to be earned through good moral conduct. In the very next video, we'll discuss all the textual questions, some important extra questions and reference to context. Thank you. Om Namah Shivaya.